This is section 9.3, Normal Distributions. And if we look at this paragraph that I've pulled from the book, um, let's just look at that for a minute. Many natural and social phenomena produce continuous probability distributions whose graphs can be approximated very well by bell-shaped curves such as these that are in the diagram below. And so these are called normal distributions and their graphs are called normal curves. Um, examples of distributions that are approximately normal are the heights of college women and the errors made in filling a one pound cereal box. So that kind of gives you that idea. We use the Greek letters mu, and so you can see that here, to denote the mean, so that's right in the middle, and sigma to denote the standard deviation. So when you see those two Greek letters, sigma and mu, you should know what those are. And we have one, uh, both of them in the formula as well. The distributions of the mean and standard deviation of a continuous distribution require ideas from calculus. We're not going to go there really, but the intuitive ideas are similar to those in the previous section. So we're just going to touch on it. You're going to get used to using some charts and a little bit on the calculator. I think we have just a few questions. So let's, let's kind of move up. All right. So you can see that a bell curve or a normal curve, um, they can be tall and thin or short and wide, but they have the same properties. The peak occurs directly above the mean. So in all of these, that's what you'll see. The curve is symmetric about the vertical line through the mean. That means if you folded the page along that line, the left would look exactly like the right. The curve never touches the x-axis. You can see that it's going along very close. It'll get infinitely close, but it does not actually touch. Um, the area under the curve and above the horizontal axis is always 1. That agrees with the fact that the sum of the probabilities in any distribution is 1. All right, so that's some general information about the normal curve. The normal probability is what we're going to look at next. And the key to finding areas under any normal curve is to express each number x on the horizontal axis in terms of the standard deviation above or below that mean. The z-score for x is the number of standard deviations that x lies from the mean. It's positive if it's above, it's negative it's, if it's below. And here is the formula for the z-score. If a normal distribution has a mean of mu and a standard deviation sigma, then the z-score is x minus mu over sigma. All right. The importance of z-scores has to do with this. The area under a normal curve between x equals a and x equals b is the same as the area under the standard normal curve between the z-score for a and the z-score for b. So if you convert the z-scores and use the table for the standard normal curve, you can find the areas under any normal curve. So we have all the stuff for a standard curve and we can find areas under any normal curve. Since these areas are probabilities, we can handle a lot of applications. So in your notes also, I have a printed um, part of the table. And in your doing your homework, you'll be able to click a link and go straight to the tables, but if you wanted to print, um, and here's the uh, continuation of those tables. So those will both be here in your lecture notes. Let's go look at our problems. The peak in a normal curve appears directly above, and that will be a pull-down menu. And remember, we show, I showed you that in the notes, that the peak, when you have that part there, down here, is the mean, and up here is the peak. So it is directly above the mean. Number two says, how are z-scores found for normal distributions? And so we're looking for the formula. We found here a z-score is found with the formula z equals x minus mu over sigma. So that's x minus the mean 
over the de standard deviation. All right. So if we're going to use our calculator, this next question, I did it on both views of the calculator that with the newer one, but this is the older TI-84, but this is the button that you would click second and the distribution button, which is above. It's the second option for VARs. And when that comes up, you'll have distributions and draw. Um, you want to choose number two right here. Um, and then use what's in your problem. So these are some screenshots for number three, but let's look at it. Um, let's look at the question. Find the percent of the total area under the standard normal curve between the following z-scores. And you can use technology or the table. And for this one I used a calculator. It's really, really easy. Um, and you find it um, normal CDF on the calculator, a lower bound, a upper bound, a mean, and a standard deviation. And for these, the mean is zero, standard deviation is one. If you're doing it on the much newer calculator, when you do normal CDF, it looks like this. The mean and the deviation are already in there. When you go down to paste and hit enter, you get this line, hit enter again, and you get your answer and we convert it to percent, so that would be 19 percent, and it says round to whole percent. If you're using the older version, when you hit normal CDF, you still have this. These are in here. Put in your negative 1.3 because it gave you these two z-scores, and you're saying, what is it between those two? And then you'll get the same. It just looks a little different, but you, you do it the same. So it's normal CDF on the calculator. If you were using the table, you would have to do some other calculations. Um, this is much easier. The table is included with the question, but let's, let's use the calculator for that one. All right, let's go do number four the same way. You're finding the percent of the total area that's between these two scores, between 0.75 and 1.4. So we go to second distribution, go to normal CDF, put in the values, the 0 and the 1 are there, we get 0.145, so if we're rounding to the whole percent, it'll be 15%. These are long because of the tables. All right, suppose that a life expectancy of a certain brand of non-defective light bulb is normally distrib distributed with a mean life of 1300 hours and a standard deviation of 100 hours. All right, so for us to find, we need to find the z-score first. And we can, um, we can do that by using the formula. And so we're talking about that we want at least 1300 hours. So that's our x. And our mean was 1300. So here's your, here's your formula, remember x minus mu over, and I can't make a sigma very well, um, and our standard deviation was 100. So that ends up being zero. And then you have your table, and we go and we are looking for a z-score of zero. z-score of zero, because that's what we're trying to find, gives us 0.5. All right, so we needed to know the z-score. Um, and what that was. All right, so then it says if 90,000 of these bulbs are produced, how many can be expected to last at least the 1,300 hours? So 90,000 times the 0.5 that we found when we used a z-score of zero. We found zero over here as a z-score. The area under the curve then would be 0.5 and we multiplied 90,000 times 0.5, and we got 45,000, which is our answer. Let's kind of recap what we did. We used the numbers that we were given in here to fill in our z, to get our z-score. And we did x minus the mean over the deviation. That gave us zero. We found a z-score of zero, and it gave us an area of 0.5. We multiplied that by 90,000 and got the 45.
Now, let's do number six. All right, so we've still got the non-defective light bulbs, and we have a mean life of 1,100 hours and a deviation of 100, and we're wanting to know the number of light bulbs that can be expected to last less than 1,280. All right, less than 1,280. So if you think about it, here's, here's our curve. 1,100 is the mean. So if we do our z-score formula, we're saying 1,280 is the number we're looking at. So 1,280 minus 1,100 over 100 gives us 1.8. So we want to go look for a z-score of 1.8. And I use the same table from here, but here's this one. Um, and that gives us an area of 0.9641. And 90 times that gives us 86,769. Okay. All right, let's look at number seven. A box of oatmeal must contain 12 ounces. The machine that fills the boxes is set so that on average a box contains 12.8 ounces. The boxes filled by the machines have weights that can closely approximate can be closely approximated by a normal curve. What fraction of the boxes filled by the machine are underweight if the standard deviation is 0.8? All right, so let's see what we've got here. The average, it told us, was 12.8. So our mean is 12.8. Standard deviation is 0.8. So Z is X minus the mean over the deviation. And we're starting at zero. Okay, so zero to get on the left of the curve, we start at zero, and then we'll go to the right. All right, so from the left, zero minus 12.8 over 0.8 is gonna give us a negative 16. So we have a z-score of negative 16 there. From the right, um, we're starting at 12 because it has to contain 12. So you think about, we're going from zero to 12. That's the range that we have. All right, so 12 minus 12.8 over 0.8 gives us a Z of negative one. And so, so what we wanna think about is we have two Z scores, the left and the right, and we're talking about, um, if we look at a Z score of negative 16, we, you know, that's going to give us an area of essentially zero. So that's not something we want to look at. We want to look at the z-score of negative 1. When we look at negative 1, we're going to get 0.1587 under the area. And so that is our probability, 0.1587. Let's do the same thing with number 8. See if I can get everything in here. All right, a box of oatmeal must contain 17 ounces. Um, average is 18 ounces. Um, and let's see, standard deviation is 0.5. So we have the mean is 18, deviation is 0.5. So we're gonna do the same thing. We have zero minus 18 divided by 0.5, which gives us a z-score of negative 36. Again, that would give us an area of zero. If we do it from the right, we have 17 minus 18 over 0.5, which gives us negative two. If we go back and use the table and find negative two right here, highlight that one, that gives us 0 0.0228. So that would be our probability, 0 0.0228. All right, our last question, I think it's our last question. The chickens at Colonel Thompson's ranch have a mean weight of 1,550 grams with a standard deviation of 100 grams. The weights of the chickens are closely approximated by a normal curve. Find the percent of all chickens having weights more than 1,440 grams. So our mean is 1,550 and our deviation is 100. Find the z-score of a chicken weighing 1,440. So. We go 1440 minus 1550 over 100. That gives us a z-score of negative 1.1. So we want to find a of negative 1.1. So do I have the tables here? Let's go back up here. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Okay, so we're looking for a z-score of negative uh, 1.1, and so we can find it here. Let me get my dot. So our probability, our area is 0.1357. So let's go back down to our problem. So we have an area of one point of the negative 1.1 of 0.1357. Now the question asked all the chickens having weights more than that. So we want the probability for weighing more is 1 minus that. And when we do that, we get 0.8643. It asks for percent, so we'll just move the decimal two places and we get 86.43%. And it does say round to two decimals, so that would be our answer for that one. So I think this gives you a taste of using z-scores and the standard normal table, and hopefully that will get you through 9.3.